let's segue to risk management. Um, so how, how can AI bolster risk management? Who wants to kick that one off, anyone? I can go. Yeah, go on, Satish. So, so I, I think it gets very quick, uh, quickly into the risk space. I mean, the same thing which we just talked about can easily be connected, like any of these infringement to data. And, and if you are in the news, it is reputational risk, as simple as that, right? So you get into a space where you were not able to address your models, and if it is not stable enough, and the decisions you can't defend, your brand is really impacted. So that is one huge risk. And then you have uh, uh, problems in terms of ESG, as you just raised. So ESG is another risk stripe, which is heavily catching up in terms of the sustainability, sustainable aspects of these Gen AI solutions in general. So that's another risk which I can definitely uh, uh, iterate on. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone? Yeah, Martin. Uh, how does it bolster uh, risk management? Yeah. A lot of times yeah. today, our risk management process are, proact are, are more reactive than proactive. So we all have first le level, first level, second le level, and, and third level of risk uh, from, uh, uh, management. But a lot of those times, there are policies in books, and there, there's no way to vet if these things are happening. So you may randomly sample and see where it's a problem, or maybe you find out these problems once they happen. Using AI, for example, to go into your call center and look at how uh, your f financial uh, advisors are you know, dishing out advice, and in real time picking up potential risk in terms of things that might not line up with regulations, is one way uh, where AI can go a long way in bolstering um, risk management. Another place is when you think about today, when you want to, there's, when you, when you want to, to, to uh, for example, give loan to somebody, there's asymmetric information. Usually, people only give you what is best for them to get the loan. Then, to a given extent, you can only go so far to find out. And that leads to adverse selection, which could eventually lead to moral hazard when they cannot pay the loan. But if you can use AI to do more and be able to map and predict with a given level of, of uh, accuracy that these are good prospects for the loan and you do it at warp speed as opposed to taking so much. So AI would work very well. One thing I would, I would caution for is that, the, the, again, going back to the data imbalance, there's inherent, uh, there's in, inherent bias in the data already. So being able to build models that you can that are transparent enough that you have ethical people building these models, that ethical decisions are made in building these models, will go a long way in mitigating the risk of this, uh, bringing uh, inadvertent risk of, you know, just redlining some people like you've seen in the past. So those are the areas that you would want to pay attention to. But it will be great to use, for, for example, uh, to augment uh, credit scoring and stuff like that. Thanks. So one, one quick point which I would like to make, again, uh, connecting to the risk uh, portion, especially on the financial crimes risk. Uh, again, we, because we are talking about generative AI here, we see a lot of potential in terms of the risk which is out there is never linear. And as a result, having s signals coming out of their raw transaction or the raw activity is one of the primary areas where it really strengthens the risk program in general to identify newer scenarios, newer indicators which never existed because your existing processes were always rule-based and traditional flags which have been identified. Now we are in a territory which is uncharted and that is the huge potential how it strengthens the risks domain. I think Ruben wanted to add something. Yeah, I mean, I think the, in terms of sort of how we're seeing it used, it's mostly again in this sort of augmenting what uh, our customers are doing already, right? So for instance, suspicious activity reports are being uh, automated, you know, compliance research is being automated and so forth. In terms of how our customers are trying to avoid these risks from manifesting, it's a couple different ways, right? One is that they, they train models specifically on their own data where they're completely in control of the training data. And so we have a, a, a large investment bank, for instance, that their institutional research portal, all the summaries there are generated by uh, a large language model. And they used a small large language model um, 
you know, open source, and they trained it on all their research, and they were able to sort of control for hallucinations because they really controlled the, the training data. They were also able to get the summaries written in the voice of their research, right? So, so, so being sort of very um, meticulous about the training data is, an, is a way of potentially avoiding the pitfalls of hallucinations. So they could actually offer this out to the institutional customers. Um, so, and, and then the other, the other way to try to avoid sort of hallucinations is by you know, bringing the fact base on which the answers are based to the model and then checking what the model is giving you back in terms of the answer and whether that, you, you know, you can trace it back to the fact base that, that you gave it. Um, so, yeah, so those are some of the ways that, that our customers are, are, are trying to, you know, stay uh, uh, in, in, you know, in, in line with, with compliance. Yeah, I th and I think that's, um, again, that relates to the SEC. I think that's going to be integral going forward that you do have this sort of, understandability and traceability because my sense is based on seeing how this SEC has been acting over the past X years, they're going to want to see that you appreciate that. Uh, you were going to add something, Daniel? Um, yeah, I, I think Ruben's uh, uh, point is uh, a good one. Um, these models are not necessarily capable of doing, at least right now, capable of pulling out something that, that a human you know, probably couldn't, couldn't do. Um, but they're much faster at it, right? And so the, to the same extent that you might uh, be processing uh, a few records, you could process now a lot of records, and you can do it in a way that's systematic um, and, and normalize that output. So the same way that you might be uh, pulling features out of, for example, a large corpus of textual data for, for the purposes of alpha, you could do the same thing for risk. 